You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast on Digital Stream Radio. We are eight weeks into the corona pandemic, and it has been an emotional roller coaster. I've started using using gardening as therapy, and it has made all the difference. Tonight, we talk about gardening even when you have a black thumb. So stick around. Hey, everyone. You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! It's good. It's Colorful Friday. (laughs) It is. It is. So excited to be here. I know. Welcome, everyone, to another show. Um, You know, this is the Breezy Moms Podcast coming to you live on Digital Stream Radio. Of course, the host with the most, Miss Candace over here. Look at her. It's like really the most. (laughs) Looking all fabulous. Uh, You know, we do this show every Thursday usually, but uh, yesterday was such a wonderful sunny day that we decided, we collectively decided that we were going to be gardening and doing all that stuff and and catching up on uh, some of the things that we like to do in the springtime. And so that's why we're doing a show on Friday. Yeah. In our we show, days. since it was sunny yesterday and, and rainy today, it made sense to be stuck inside, to stay inside today. Correct. And so this show is available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio. Uh, what's the other one? Spotify. S- Spotify. I always forget <laughs> Spotify. I don't know why. I could never remember that. Um, but yeah, it is available. So if you guys like to follow us, uh, you know, follow Kansas, uh, make sure that you go and subscribe. That way you get the latest and greatest of her show delivered right to your favorite web browser or device as soon as we publish the episodes. Or you can follow us on Facebook Live, which will allow you to um, to watch the live stream show while we're in quarantine um, every week. So that's awesome. So. Yeah. It really is. And I love that you get the update whenever it comes out because during Corona, we, we record when we can. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is true. <laughs> and even though we're stuck in the house some nights, I just, some, some days, I just can't do it. And I've decided that it's got to be okay or else it, it ceases being a joy for me to come on and become a like another stress factor and right now we don't need any of that so thanks patience when we reschedule absolutely i agree uh i i had to so candace we we were doing the pre-recording we were um just hanging out in 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 the staging area trying to figure out what we were going to do and Candace came on with this headdress, and I was like, oh, my God, you look very colorful and amazing. And my ass better go put something colorful. I had a T-shirt, and I was like, let me go get my sarong. I'll be right back. I'm wearing <laughs> – I knew exactly where it was, too. Yeah. I was like, I'm wearing a sarong right now over my, my chest because you I don't want to see all this. And arms out, shoulders yeah. out. Time. So here, here is my farmer's tan from farming, from farming, from uh, gardening all weekend. Look at that this. That is so impressive. That is that is intense. Okay, yeah. I am. I mean, especially this early in the season. But we did have a couple really good days. I just was overdressed for gardening. I don't know how to garden. I'm wearing jeans and shit. I don't know. It's and duck boots this week is what I was wearing. <laughs> it's it's quite it was quite the burn the first day, but most of that was due to the fact that I was laying new concrete borders around my uh, flower mm-hmm. beds, and so that work requires that you're constantly on your knees and your back is literally exposed to the elements. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, just uh, it was backbreaking, literally. Mm-hmm. I well, that's exactly why I wanted to, us to come on tonight and talk about it, because I think we've both been doing an, an inordinate amount of gardening, at least this week, since the weather has broken a little bit. And uh, I have never gardened before, like seriously have never gardened before. And so I just really wanted to talk about it. It's amazing. So before we get into all that gardening and stuff, you know how we do. I have a question for, uh, for Miss Candace. Candace, I have a question for you. Ah, yes. What What is your question? How are your amazing boys? They are truly amazing. They really are. I couldn't, I couldn't do any of this gardening stuff without them. And they are, they are picking it up and are into it, even though we don't actually have any plants. I guess we do have, we have some, we have some seeds growing in the house, which I actually brought up tonight so that uh, everybody could see just a little sample of what we've got going on. And it's just been really fun talking with them about it. And I have been super like surprised by how 
into it, even I'm getting. So they are really good. Uh, one thing I, I do have to share, because even in the midst of being awesome, they still are themselves and have their own little personalities. So this morning, uh, Emery was running around, it was pretty early in the morning, and James has been working upstairs in the studio. So we were up here talking like our little morning, our little morning meeting. And Emery came up here like in a flash, right? In a, in a whoosh and was jumping on everything and blah, blah. And I looked at him and I go, Emery, aren't you so lucky to have this big house to, to run around? Like you're so lucky to have a big house where you can just run around wherever you want. And he dead ass looked at me and said, mom, nobody cares. <gasps> And I nearly fell out. Okay. I just nearly <laughs> didn't know what to do with that. I was like, first of all, who says that? And second of all, what kind of like preteen three year old are you? He's your son. <laughs> he <laughs> is your son. There's mom. <laughs> oh my God. That's too funny. It was really too much. It was, you really know, well, much. at that age, also, kids tend to say the Darden stings right there, just mm-hmm. like, you know, oh, I don't care. Um, no. I'm trying so hard to figure out where he gets that from because I feel like I've started saying I don't care because he's saying it. I don't say that's that. Now, if he said, what the hell, right? I'm waiting for I would it. <laughs> that more than I don't care. You would own it, right? I, it would be funny when he starts like, listen. Right, exactly. Because that's exactly. something that you always or say. Or if he says, stop your foolishness. Like, that's something I probably say 39 times a day. There are things that I say, I know I say, I will totally own up to them. But just a random, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. That I is, think it's something he saw on TV. That is too funny, though. Uh, come on. That's got to be funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to, to let them know that it is funny, right? Because once mm-hmm. you do... They're going to run with it and kids do that. You know, it's like when they swear and you don't want to acknowledge that they did. So you don't want to sort of kind of celebrate it, Mm -hmm. but it's kind of funny at first because you didn't expect it. Exactly. And, and because they know exactly how they learn so quickly, Mm -hmm. exactly how to say, um, I don't think they're idioms or just like phrases that are culturally appropriate, maybe inappropriate for a three-year-old, but are definitely in the lexicon or lexium or whatever the hell it's called, they know exactly how to speak mm. English the way the people around them speak English. You know what I mean? It's a product so, of their environment. Exactly. So most most of the time I would I would accept responsibility. But this one I feel like really isn't me. <laughs> that is too funny. You know, kids will be kids. That's all they you can will. say. They will. And then Link, so that's Emery is just who he is, who he is, and he's going to do what he wants to do. The other thing with him, I think, I can't remember if we talked about, did we talk about regression the last time we were on the show? Did I tell you about that? I'm not sure. Yeah. So it's been a couple of weeks, so I can't even remember. But I think vaguely I talked about it in the last the last episode that we're struggling with a little bit of re- regression in the house. So you think you've gotten to a certain point, but then when trauma, you know, and being stuck in the house and school is closed and none of your normal routine is, is normal anymore. That is, is basically trauma for a little kid. And I feel traumatic about it too. So anyway, they are regressing. There's like full on regression. We've had some like bathroom accidents, although in the last week, it seems like it's getting a little bit better. Uh, we've had like big blowouts, just everybody lo- like is on edge and any little thing will set set off the boys, set me off. I can't even deny, you know, like it's just, we've all been on edge. So, um, so I try not to, and James reminds me not to like add to that by like also flying off over the edge Mm -hmm. when when they have a hard time because then it's just a you know it's like a pylon so 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 we're all dealing with that and in this last week i think definitely a couple things have come into play the weather has gotten a little bit better and um until we've before it gets worse (laughs) yeah but i mean still you just need a break right Mm -hmm. even when Really hot in the summertime you need a cool break like you just need a break this weather was so dark and dreary and gloomy for the last few days the last couple weeks that we really were all sort of sliding into a sad depression <laughs> so 
and it was it was more than welcome. I got so much done um, in these beautiful sunny, you know, spring days that we got uh, because it was necessary. I mean, you just need to be outdoors. You need to. Mm-hmm. Oh, my dogs were out there for hours. They were loving it. By the time they came back in, they were tired. They were like, "I've run this backyard up," and and you know, my backyard has a hill, right? No, yeah, it goes down on a slope. So that constant running up and down to go bark at the dog in front, and then bark at the dog in the back, and then mm-hmm. the dog to the left. And the dog to the right, literally, they were they were done. Mm-hmm. They came in. I wiped their feet, like I always do, uh, with their with their wipes, and oh, they just jumped on the sofa, and <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's great. That <laughs> really is. So it's it's been a turn for everyone. I think that we've yeah. all needed a little bit of um, of relief from the rain and the mm-hmm. dreary. So I welcome it, and I think the boys definitely welcomed it. We spent all day out yesterday. We were outside multiple times, even times when I thought we should be napping. I was like, mm, you guys don't look like you're mm. going to fight you over nap time. So let's just go back outside. So that, that's that's yeah. awesome. And how's James? He's good. So he just started physical therapy on his foot. Remember that he mm-hmm. his Achilles earlier this year. And so now he is doing physical therapy. And I think it's a it's a new a new round of pain, you know, like it's a different kind of pain in, in forcing yourself to, to, to work on strengthening the, the whole leg. Actually, it's, it's amazing. It's been three months or so. And you can tell like the whole leg is just atrophied, like no muscle, like it just, if you stop using parts of your body, it, it goes away <laughs> really fast. So he's trying to regain strength and flexibility and, you know, muscle in the whole leg, not just down by the ankle. Because it looks kind of funny, right? He's got like one thick, nice, juicy leg right. and the other one is just like, <laughs> yeah, this one went on vacation and forgot to eat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't even think he can form a calf muscle. Like that's how weak the the muscle has gotten. So wow. I feel terrible for him because you can, I've never done physical therapy, but from the, the way that he describes it, it's like they put in a lot of hard work on it. So it actually hurts more now than it did before. That's interesting. Well, I'm glad he's I... on the mend. He took the boot off. He's, you know, learning how to walk again and putting weight on it. So we're good. getting, well, good for him. I'm yeah, happy good. for him because you know, that's, it is very traumatizing and, and sometimes you just have to, you know, let things find their way, you know, let, take your time, you know, th- physical therapy is something that, you know, should, um, people should understand that, um, it takes time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's tough for someone who's super active. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's tough to, to slow down and to relearn how to do all of these things. So, you know, we're, we're all I'm I'm trying not to let the the only thing I say over and over again is make sure you take the medicine like take the Advil. It's okay to take a little bit of Advil to take the pressure off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not gonna get you're not going to overdo it. Like if you're worried about overdoing it, you're not going to overdo it. Yeah. So take the medicine and don't sit in pain for no for no reason. Especially you know on top of the fact that not not only is he recovering from this injury, and now he's learning how to do all of those you know functional motor motory uh, skills on his leg that was affected. Mm-hmm. We're in quarantine. You're yep. working from home. All of the usual things that you normally have in place to get you out of that element that we are currently in are not possible. Mm -hmm. So that exasperates your desperation even more, right? Because you can't do things to distract your mind from this happened. Right. Right. It's true. So I'm sure that's, that, that has a lot to do with it. So Candace, he's great. Before we um, move into our conversation of gardening Mm -hmm. and all the craziness that we're going to do, why don't we, plug your your yeah. website your echo body tell us a little I, bit about echo body yeah. so that's what i'm wearing today i wanted to show you the full on you ready go for it oh bam it's a it's a bullseye it is a bullseye so these are i'm sorry it's weird cuz i have the the face cover on so what i'm wearing today is a, a head wrap and face cover um Oh, it's upside down set. That's what it is. And so like 
you have to cover up your face and you probably have on a hat. Like I usually, it's still pretty cool. Or if you haven't combed your hair, you have something on your hair mm-hmm. and it's like, why not have them matching? And it's been great because I go out um, a couple times to like pick up lunch and stuff. And I have on these things and I swear the the look on people's faces <laughs> when they see you, it's, it's like, why not be fashionably awesome? When That's you- right. Up, right like i mean listen if we gotta wear them we might as well make them look good might as well make it look good so this is it's gonna be a little bit ch- i'm gonna try really quickly to show you this is a three-piece set it actually comes with a a sash and the head wrap oh oh, oh magic the oh. head wrap is a piece of fabric like this that my mom actually sewed in some elastic on the back. I think one of the things that's the most challenging for me ever with um, head wraps is you don't exactly quite know how to do it if you're not a pro at it. And a lot of times there's a whole lot of fabric, right? So this is a like smaller piece of fabric. It makes it a whole lot easier to maneuver. And so you put the stretchy piece behind your head. And then what I like is twist it around just a little bit to get the the piece a little bit tight around your the back of your head. And then you can sort of wrap it together. And then you really the magic of this kind of fabric is that it's a little bit stiff and you really just have to sort of zhuzh it until it gets into a way that you like and you put on your little mask. Look at like, her. Like so. And then the sash is optional, but I like to put it on just for good measure. And then you end up with like a little bow. And then you literally just like zhuzh it like so. And the fabric is so stiff that then it stays. It's like the, it, it's like the Michael Jackson of headdresses, right? It's just like it's all in layers and amazing and fabulous, and and it looks a lot more complicated than it, than it is because literally you just I just did that with the reflection of the video, but you li- literally just kind of like zhuzh it until you you know I don't even know how to spell zhuzh, okay? I don't I don't know. Well, it's but, zhuzh, but I know how to say it, and then <laughs> it looks like this looks a little bit like a flower. And so you can tilt it to the side, you can wear it in the middle, you can put the, the like thing in the back. But I think my favorite part about this design is that there isn't all this extra fabric that I don't know what to do with. It's like yeah. just the right amount and you can get a little, you know, a little fancy. And the great thing is that like if you don't have to go outside and you don't like you don't have um, you don't have to cover your face because you're not going outside, but you still want to use your head wrap. Like you can do the head wrap and not have to worry about. We we thought about making a piece that was connected, more like a like a helmet type situation, and and then landed on these two pieces because you know eventually Corona is going to go away, eventually uh-huh. go away, and we won't have to wear face covers anymore. But I want to make sure that we can. What sleep. stop? I want my face cover. You want to wear a face cover forever? <laughs> forever and ever. I think it's the safest thing we can do at this point. You know? Because we got Corona now. What's next? I know. I'm murder hornets, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, be careful with that headdress because, you know, they do like bright colors. I know. I know. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to show you because um, we have to sh- I have to show... A lot of people have been asking me, so all of these masks you can find, and actually the head wrap and mask duo will be available starting Saturday morning. So a little like tease for everyone. So a lot of people have been asking me how to put on some of the other ones. So I just want to take a quick, we have another one that is, I call the drawstring. So the bottom is open and the top is on. One of the things my mom wanted to make sure that people new is one how to get it on so you put it put on the ring under your neck and then you bring it up to your nose and you tie it right and you just kind of tie it to a spot that makes sense for you and then you adjust it you see that and then the very important part is in order to make sure that you are not infecting yourself right like if there was any corona that got on your mask 
when you take it off, you want to hold it and roll it down so that you're like covering up any of the parts and then pull it over your head and then put it in the laundry machine. Amazing. Look at you. So those are the two ones that I think people have been a little bit confused about how to put on, but mostly um, the importance of how to take off some of these things, because we're doing a lot of, a lot of covering up. And then I think that we're not all very aware of how to safely take like disrobe, right? There's a whole, there's a whole way that people in the medical field, nurses, doctors, like people who are really in the thick of it have to disrobe or else like all of the covering was for nothing if then you lick your fingers and take it off incorrectly you know what i mean yeah so one thing is worth noting ladies and gents you see that little um ticker down here at the bottom of the screen mm -hmm. it has a website breezymoms.com you can also go to echobody.com either site will bring you to the place you need to be to find all of this amazing merchandise that our dearest candace is displaying for you all um and there's another version of it this one is a little That's bit more perfect. metallic Yes, this is a gold metallic that uh, went out of stock very quickly. And so we got some more in so that um, I could stop getting the phone calls that say, when are the gold ones coming back? <laughs> like, hurry up, please. That, know, that's amazing. So we have face covers. The important thing is to say is that they're not surgical masks. So you want to make sure that you are still being careful and maintaining a, um, a good distance from people. If you have to be out, obviously stay home if you can. But if you have to be out, make sure you're keeping a good distance. Make sure you're covered up. And then um, I don't recommend that you use the same mask every day. So uh, you could get a couple from me or you get a couple from wherever. But you want to have a couple so that each day that you come back inside with your mask, you can put your mask in the laundry and then you always have a, a fresh one. I actually like to keep all of our fresh ones on a hook by the front door so that we always know where they are. And then when we come inside, I grab them all and put them in the wash in the, in the laundry to be laundered. That's awesome. Yep. And then the, the last thing that I have to do because like, I have to is show you that we have um you guys are aware of it's my favorite thing i'm obsessed with our deodorant mm. our deodorant cream which i think the lighting is gonna mess with but anyway it's That's our okay i got you baby girl oh yes perfect so it's our natural deodorant cream and then you're seeing on the screen here we just got in some fantastic reusable bamboo scoops and so you can use that scoop i have been doing this for quite some time so i'm pretty good with and like to stick my finger in the deodorant but sometimes people don't like that or to if you have long nails it might be awkward for you to get your finger into the um into the deodorant jar so we got these applicators and they fit perfectly inside to scoop up a little bit of product and so you can find them on our website with our deodorant and our new bamboo applicators so I just wanted to share that with everybody. That's amazing. And so again, the website is echobody.com. Make sure that you go check it out, grab the product I, I use. So this deodorant cream I use, like, so I, I'm going to be very honest with you. I've been home for a month and a half. So I haven't been wearing deodorant all day long or every day. Okay. But here's the thing. I had told Candace when I first started using it, you know, for men, it's a little bit different. You get, you, we get really funky. Mm -hmm. And I, when I started using the deodorant, what I noticed was is that I was dry, I was fresh, but even when I forgot to apply it, I still remained dry and fresh. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I haven't worn deodorant today, I don't think yesterday, even the day before that, and I have no odor. I don't smell. Oh, so good. And I'm I think sad. that, um, you know, you had explained to me that, you know, a lot of what people don't realize is when you're using regular deodorants that have these metallic components in it. They're covering your pores. They're covering um they have no antibacterial or anti um or you know sanitary components to them. And so you're holding on to bacteria and then it's being masked by a smell. Mm -hmm. it With is. your deodorant, you can wash 
and rinse everything that you've applied off and you've got a nice fresh armpit that has time to breathe and really do what it needs to do. And I think that um, that really has lent itself to to me not having to, one, go out to the store and spend crazy buku dollars on deodorants when I can just buy one little canister from you that will last me forever. Yep, yep. So, so it's, it's good really good. So what's happening is that the deodorant is a, is allowing your underarms to breathe and it's allowing your body to to do what it does best, right? To like work the way it's supposed to mm-hmm. by allowing you to sweat and expel any kinds of um, you know, toxins that are inside of your body. It's allowing them to come out and then the deodorant is killing off any bacteria that's on your skin. So what what happens is that you go through maybe a detox period where you've stopped using a traditional deodorant and so now your underarm is able to actually get out all that's all that junk that's been backed up. Then you are in a good groove and so then you probably could go a couple days without using it because this is probably not in the first few days, but after a little while of using it, you can go a few days without reapplying because your body has sort of um, evened out. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So that's where you're at is that you have reached this like new stage of, um, of what's the word? Equilibrium is what I want to say. Nice and fresh. Yeah. Nice and fresh. Just (laughs) nice and fresh. And the, my favorite thing is that, like, the scent of these deodorants, it's you can smell it at first, but it, eventually it dissipates. And then you literally smell like nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. I feel, yeah, I feel like I don't smell funky, but I also don't smell overly floral or overly, like, fragrant. Because then you get a whiff, you know, like, it's the middle of the day and you get a whiff of, I don't know, coconut lime or whatever the... But, or cucumber mist. I used to choose cucumber mist all the time. And it would just like, you just get a whiff of it. It's too much. So, yeah. Anyway, no, now I you, I feel like you just smell human now. At least that's how I yeah, smell. It's, well, I, it's, uh, it's not bad, but it's amazing. It's just yeah. great product. I have to tell you. I'm so glad. I'm just so remember glad. Remember to that. make mine without the bees, bags. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have some, some preferences for the creamier stage oh but God. um you know i'm i'm mostly worried about it melting if people have it and you know when summertime comes we need yeah. a little bit of firmness but anyway thanks for listening i hope that you give it a try because i think one of the the hardest things is getting people to make a change that they've probably been like you've probably been using people listening have probably been using the same deodorant since high school maybe even junior high i used to use secret uh huh. Me too. Mm-hmm. Secret and, then and... I, I probably changed the Dove like 15 years ago and haven't like the shea butter uh, Dove for like 15 years. You don't even think twice about it, but it can't hurt to try it, and I promise you will love it. <laughs> well, it is what it is. So yeah, well, let's um, start gardening now. Yes. So I'll let you start off before we, because let me tell you, like I said before. You've been out in the. You've been out working hard. <laughs> Look at that. I see those tan lines. I don't have any tan lines yet because I was wearing a sweater because you know maybe it might get cold. The kids were were so upset with me because I kept saying, "Put on a sweater. It's still cold outside." And they're like, "No, it's not." Yeah, it's like I felt like like a construction worker working outside, uh, in the dead of like August, right? In right. like ninety five degree heat with that sun just beating on my back. Mm-hmm. Beating but it was on my back. Time. It was a good time. So I really wanted to talk about gardening because I <laughs> legit have never had a successful plant stay alive in my house for at least not this adult time in this house for seven years or any time before that. Actually, early on, I got a succulent and what and decided to put it on a shelf like on an ikea shelf forgetting that there was no sunlight in there so i managed to kill a succulent like you're not supposed to be able to kill a succulent well a you're, you're not supposed how to be able can to you kill a, the only way you can kill a succulent is to overwater it 
and not give it any sun. <laughs> it's well, su- the sun really is not a, a huge requirement, but it's mm-hmm. it's a it's really the water content. A lot of people don't realize that succulents store a lot of water in their leaves, so you don't water. have to water it every other day or every week. You can mm-hmm. go to two and three weeks without watering a succulent. And all you really have to do is make sure that you, at some point, wash off, not necessarily wash off, but but rub off all of the dust that accumulates on the leaves so that the leaves can breathe. Oh, that's a good point. I've and never people usually like take, like, you know, you'll take a little bowl with water and a Q-tip and you go through and you just basically just clean off the leaves so that they can breathe, but they really don't need that much water. So That sounds so Montessori. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a lot of work. I have a whole bunch of succulents. Trust me. I love them. So now we have, so yeah, so I killed them. I do have an aloe vera plant that is kind of holding on, although I probably haven't watered it in a few weeks. So that's good. It's okay. I'm going to go check it out. But (laughs) this, in this time where I, I was saying earlier that it has been totally an emotional time for me, we're in eight weeks eight weeks in and probably up until six weeks in, I, I like didn't know coming or going here or there. I didn't know what was going on. And then a couple weeks ago, my friend Donna Ree actually posted that she and her girls were growing some beans and they did the beans in the Ziploc bag, like attached to the window. And that in, that just inspired me because uh, I thought I would do the beans. And then I remember that we actually have seeds. Like James bought all these seeds, like our apocalypse farm, regrow the planet kind of seeds. And, <laughs> and so we had all these seeds and he actually bought two packs of them. So I ha- still haven't used all of our seeds. But I thought this is this is a reasonable thing for me to like maybe this is something I can spend time, like a little bit of focused energy on because I was flailing before that. And this gave me totally something to really focus on. Now it hasn't been, it's not perfect because I remember that day when we planted, I asked the boys if they wanted to plant with me and I was like, it was going to be an activity. And then it was taking a little while and they got a little distracted. And I was like, do you guys want to plant? Like, like it was supposed to be fun, but I did get frustrated in the middle. So I don't want it to sound like anything is perfect. Nothing is perfect. We're still yeah. human. It's still a, a you know challenging time. So there are going to be ups and downs. But I, I did push through and we did get the plants, plant the seeds planted, even though I had to finish planting them myself. And we've, I cleared off. I like, basically just dehorted a whole window that was just full of trash. You know, you have a window where, anything you find on the floor and you don't know where it goes, you just put it on the corner in the window. That's what this window looked like. It was like the leg of a Lego person or like a random <laughs> or, or like a clothespin. Like it's just a whole bunch of random shit. The so collector. I, exactly. It's just, that's what it was. So I cleared off the whole thing and then, and then also tried to, rem- to remember that this was supposed to be a, a good activity for me, a calming activity for me, something like a, like a gentle activity for me. So I didn't want to overthink any of it. And what I was able to do was pick up a bunch of these like compost. Do you see them? They're like compost starter buckets. I don't know if that's bowls. What is that called, Tommy? Yeah, they're, well, they're little planters. Planters. That's what it is. It's a compostable, compostable. I think that's how you say it. Compostable. Plant- planter and so the goal is you can use them as a starter and then once you're ready to transplant you can actually just transplant the whole thing like you don't have to take it out of this thing because this little paper thing will decompose or compost in your thing anyway so i had a bunch of these and this is what we planted so i have these peas these i think they're sugar peas or something oh my god and i sugar peas oh my god they're so they're so good yeah, so we did this on April 22nd, 27th. So we are about two weeks into planting. And I'm so excited. Like, I have never, I've never cared about gardening, whether plant, whether flowers or like edible, edible plants. Um, but it really, I also don't think I believed that it was going to work. I don't know why. I don't know why it wouldn't, but. I wasn't in a frame of mind to even believe that the the seeds were going to sprout. And so when they started sprouting, I was like, oh, my God, they're sprouting. Don't doubt Mother Nature. Listen, there's a way. Where there's a will, There's she will find a way. 
He finds a way. So that's our peas. These are our cucumbers. Do you see them? Oh, wow. So I've got three, six, seven, and one little one is growing. So this is our, we have seven cucumber plants. I also didn't realize that each seed grew an entire, like, like this is how just ignorant I am about plants, right? They tell you to plant one seed every eight inches or whatever the hell it is. And I was like, no, we need all the seeds. <laughs> so we took our finger and just like, board holes in it and then some of the seeds are so little tomato seeds are so little um cucumber seeds are a little bit bigger you can imagine eating a cucumber but some of the seeds are so little like our fingers couldn't even pick up just one seed so you'll see like our kale plant we probably have a hundred seeds in here. By oh accident. my God. But kale is so good. And that's good that you planted like a lot of kale because it's one of those greens that goes fast, right? Yep. So it's, you can use it in a salad. You can use kale in pretty much anything. And it's amazing. Exactly. I love and it. It's, it's almost like um, an arduous uh, a green. I, I, it's a green that has an edge to it. Yes, it does. And so this one, here's the thing I didn't know about kale. Like it started with these little leaves, these little budding leaves, but those aren't the actual kale leaves. Now we're getting to the leaves that are very distinctively kale with the mm -hmm. little edges on them. And, and so now I find myself going, oh, that's what kale looks like. Like that's an actual baby kale leaf. It's amazing. It truly is. And I really think it's this, it's this these these um reactions that i'm finding myself have in a way that i've never like i don't care about plants or at least i didn't think i cared about plants but i really needed something to pay attention to to focus my energy on um to remind me that there's still like the the world is still moving. The days are the days are still going by. Like life is still happening, even though we feel like stuck or at a standstill or however it is that you feel. Like things are still happening, and I haven't I hadn't been able to understand that or internalize that for the first six weeks of like pandemic quarantine, and now it's it's so hard to ignore. Yeah. That. Where I'm at. That's where I'm at now. So and you know, so you've gotten your your feet on the ground, right? And yep. your hands literally on the ground. Mm -hmm. And there's something calming and soothing and grounding about working with the earth, coming back to the earth, right? Because it gives us so much. A lot of people don't realize grounding. how much we get from this amazing earth that we live in. And so when you put something back into it to see the return, that's the gratification. It is hard work. Mm -hmm. Gardening is not gardening and and you know even just like a vegetable garden is not easy work. It takes planning, it takes dedication, it takes a scheduling for feeding and you know you got to remember to to add your nutrients, etc. if you want to produce amazing food, you mm -hmm. have to put in the work. Put in the work. Exactly. So we started our seeds inside and then um and then, of course, I was trying to figure out what, like, what were we going to do outside? And a lot of times I start to overthink, like any idea that I have, I start to overthink. And then you go and then you're like, oh, well, let me go to Pinterest for some some inspiration. Mm. And then you end up so deep, like so many pages deep into Pinterest, like six hours has gone by. Your eyes are burning. The sun is coming up and you still haven't really decided what you're you're going to do. And so I tried really, really hard to focus on getting a little bit of inspiration around things that I already had. What, what did I already have? And so I decided I'm going to do container gardens. And I remembered that I had some tires, some recycled tires that I, I got from a mechanic probably last year that have just been knocking around. Oh, I should totally bring these pictures up, huh? Yes. So I had these tires and then I went and got some, what I can think are really nice, earthy, um, neutral pa spray paint colors. And the boys and I spray painted the tires. So we've got a, a color called, um, I think it's called sea moss. 
it's moss, something like that, moss. The brown is a nutmeg. And then the two pops of color are two different shades of turquoise that we had. And I wanted to make sure that I used some neutral <laughs> colors so that it could be here for a while and I wouldn't get annoyed with them. But I also needed just like a hint of vibrance, right? And there's nothing, you know, turquoise just is always a fun, a fun color. So we, of course, went from four tires because I am overzealous about everything. Now we have eight tires. <laughs> I went back to the mechanic and I showed him a picture of the the things that I had already spray painted. And so he kind of looked like he was a little bit excited for me. He was like, OK, so what kind of tires do you need? So he gave them to me for free. Mechanics have to pay to recycle the tires. So if you're going to come and take them away and they don't have to pay for it, they're actually pretty happy um, and easygoing about just giving it to you for free. So the boys and I spray painted them with some like um, spray paint that's good for plastic and then allowed them to dry. We did two coats to get a good, like I didn't think it needed to be perfect, but I did really want to get rid of the black because there's something about the the plain black tire that just looks like a junkyard. And now it's totally, it's to, I, I remember James was like, so um, do you have like um, a picture or something that you're working from? Like something I could see about like, what direction you're going in? Because like, James, relax. It's, it's going to be fine. It's not going to look like a junkyard. So now our tires are all painted and we've started putting in um, fabric, fabric, um, garden fabric inside of the tire because I don't want any of my plants to go through to the ground. Mm -hmm. our, our neighborhood a hundred years ago was a, um, what is it called? Uh, a landfill. Our whole neighborhood was a landfill. <laughs> was so it really? Yeah, it was like a legit landfill. So the ground over here is not good. Like, I don't know, lead, arsenic, all kinds of stuff is in the ground. Yeah. So you really don't want to be, you don't want to plant any, especially any root vegetables in the ground because that's what's going to soak up all of the things that are in the ground. Well, maybe it's good fertilizer. You never know. Mm, People yeah, were a little bit more organic back in those days than we are now in, in, in more recent times. Yeah, but landfill means like more than just garbage, like like um, uh, construction stuff, you know, like yeah. uh, like it's just too much. What happens is uh, anytime you dig down, you know, a, a few inches into our yard, you can find it's like um, it's like archaeology. When we dug the post for our fence, we found a piece of a Worcestershire glass bottle top from nineteen. 33 or huh. something like that. like it's <laughs> we find bits of old china we find bits of bottles that are out of um circulation now it's actually kind of cool but uh it also means you don't want to eat anything that's, huh. that's ground yeah interesting well, the good thing is a couple of years ago we um raised our whole yard and put down fresh dirt so the top layer is okay but really if you go down you can just see it the dirt turns it turns like this red clay color it's not it's not regular dirt so huh interesting so anyway the goal is to do a container garden and we're going to use these tires so we have some um paper bags some recycled paper bags that i had we're using to help cover up the ground so that we can minimize the weeds and then I'm going to cover that with some mulch. Mm -hmm. And then inside of the tires, we've got some fab some garden fabric to kind of ensure that our plants don't go in like through into the ground. And then the other thing, if you can um, uh, into the back, you'll see in this picture. And if you're not watching, then I'll just explain it. Uh, since I'm using tires, you know, there's a lot of like dead space in the drum of the tire. Mm -hmm. in and, sewing. and so I saw on Pinterest that instead of filling the whole tire with dirt, which I am actually buying dirt, right? I'm like paying for soil. You don't, your plants are not going to grow sideways into the like deepness of the, of the drum. So you can use some recyclables. And so what I have used are some uh, recycled two liter uh, plastic bottles to line the inside of the tires at, which helps to like take up some of the dead space and then the dirt, then you're only filling the center of the tire. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I, I, it does. I'm, I was actually trying to get a screenshot here. Let me stop sharing the screen here really quick. And so that so we're doing the the layer of plastic bottles while you're while you're grabbing your your screenshot. We're doing the layer of plastic bottles. And then I also did a layer of peat moss uh, about halfway up the the tire because mm-hmm. again, we're paying for the dirt that's going in there. And I have eight tires. So uh, peat moss is pretty inexpensive and it's dirt. Actually, I thought a couple of years ago that peat moss was actually moss, but it's just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's got a lot of woodsy chips in it and stuff. Right. So it right. really helps with not only aeration, which is very important for gardening, mm-hmm. uh, but it also helps with with filling up without having to to like uh, do a lot of your expensive soil. Yes, yes. So we are filling halfway with peat moss, and then the second half we're going to do with the the soil. So that that's my plan, but we're We've only filled, I think we filled three tires with peat moss. Uh, and the next time we go out there, we're going to do the rest, which is going to give us probably, it's probably several days now before we are actually going to plant our 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 seedlings. But they could uh, actually use a little bit more time before they come outside. So, we're okay. so here's a screenshot that I took just to sort of kind of show you um, mm-hmm. where the like two liter soda bottles are lining the rim of the inside of the tire so yes yeah and this screenshot shows we had a double layer of them and uh, after i took the picture we decided to take the top layer of bottles out because i was afraid that you would be able to see the bottles through the dirt right they were there these specific tires the rim was really shallow so it wasn't actually covering the whole bottle so that's actually good those those tires are much bigger than the other ones and it has a wider opening. So we'll have more like surface area for the plants to grow Mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the smaller tires. They have a deeper drum, which means a smaller surface area to grow out of because the, you know, so anyway, um, we're planning to plant our tomatoes, which grow pretty big and our cucumber plants, which also grow pretty big in those larger tires. And then the smaller ones will do, you know, our kale and our peas and lettuce and that sort of thing. So it's super exciting. And what I'm what I'm doing now while I'm waiting for us to get back outside is learning a little bit about companion plants, which plants do well together. Like mm-hmm. sometimes there's a, a plant that repels, there's a plant that gets a bug that likes to eat it. But if you plant another plant that repels that bug, then you, you help it out, you know, you help it out. So I didn't even know that was a thing, right? Like oh I, yeah. Like I had no idea. So I'm learning a lot about which plants you can plant together, which plants you should not plant together and that sort of thing. So that's the next level of, um, of planning, which of course, like you said, it's all work. It's not, you can't just throw stuff out there. I mean, you kind yeah. of can, you can't really. Um, and so I'm just trying to take it step by step and learn a little bit at a time and not overwhelm myself with too much information, but use it as a, a thing to focus on. And it's actually been really fun. And you've got lettuce in this one. You've got a lot of cute pictures. Do you mind if I share some of these with the folks? Please do. Please do. So you have, I I see that you have, obviously, we just saw lettuce. I see here the kids helping you out, filling Mm -hmm. in all of the amazing uh, beds that you're creating. We have lettuce. We have kale. We have a jalapeno. I didn't know that jalapenos took, uh, they take quite a lot of time to bud. So it's finally shown itself this week, you know, in week three, in week three, we have um, peas and cucumbers and raspberries and strawberries and mint and sweet basil. And two boys. Look how gorgeous oh, those boys, boys are. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. I know. It's been That's really awesome. good. So, he, so here's your little rambunctious Emery. What is he doing in this picture? He is watering the raspberry bush. So we have a raspberry um, plant inside of a container because raspberries are weeds. Raspberries and mint. Um, they're and they're, they're very evasive. 
they're very invasive. So they're basically weeds that we like, you know, they're like fruiting weeds that we like, but they will take over your whole yard. So yes. if you don't want your whole yard to be full of mint and raspberries. You should plant it in a planter. Yes. So that's what we've done. Wow. That's amazing. Um, and yeah, so the the boys are, you know, we're we're getting into it. And I mean, we're really only a week or two weeks into gardening, but I'm getting into it. And I find that the more excited I am about something, the more excited they get about it. And then it's just good for all of us. That's awesome. That is really, really awesome. And and like I said, you you connect with the earth and you you get back to 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 being grounded in some way, shape, or form, especially in the midst of something like this, when you think about you know COVID nineteen and and all of the different things that we're doing nowadays as a result of uh, this mm-hmm. virus. So interesting, yeah. I mm-hmm. I'm on the other spectrum of of gardening, right? Uh, I'm not doing a vegetable garden. Although I do plant certain things throughout the year, like, for example, I'll do my cilantro, I'll do my jalapeno, um, and the reason is because I like to make guacamole in the summer. Mm. And so I like to have, and I do my little cherry tomatoes, uh, which I like for my salads on a nice cool day with some cucumber and onions and a little bit of um, of vinegar and things like that. You can just make a nice little cold salad. Those mm-hmm. are awesome. Mm-hmm. So um, I do a lot of that. But what I've been doing uh, is investing in the landscaping so that was my my uh little project is mm-hmm. is focusing more on the landscaping part of the home which can increase the value of the property and also makes it look nice so um i had this area in the back that uh was there but it was sort of kind of plain it just had like this one bush i'll, I'll bring this image here and see if i can show you so in this image you can clearly see that there's only like this one bush here Mm -hmm. and this border that i created out of cement uh wasn't there and so it was just mulched and i was like all right i need to really accentuate and make it look different and and exciting and i also want to bring in more plants um and and also be smart about it so it is no secret i will tell you people Ugh, plants are expensive. They are. Gardening is expensive. <laughs> um, and so if you're going to do it, make yeah, sure that you is. do things that come back every year. Perennials are the ideal, you know, um things to put in your in your in in your landscaping plan only because they're economical in the long run. You mm-hmm. buy it once and it comes back every year as long as you're fertilizing correctly and you're ensuring that you have the the correct nutrients, then, you know, things fall into place and you don't have to continuously reinvest in um, vegetation every year. So that's important. So that's why I decided to go with perennials. And so what I ended up doing, I want to show you guys, it's so much fun. So this this is why you have to like us on Facebook uh, so that you can see what we're showing you on the screen. So here is... um, During the construction process, when I was building the concrete form, Mm-hmm. And you can see this is where I had left off. Super impressive because the mold that you're using is like six inches long. So, so this is why again. Um, let me come Your back over is here. Intense. It's intense. <laughs> this is why this is like this. Yep. Right? yep. Uh, it's because I spent literally Saturday and Sunday on my knee. Uh, Saturday from ten in the morning to seven o'clock at night on my knees to get done just that wow just that little piece because it's a six inch mold and you keep filling it in and moving it over filling it in and then you got to sort of kind of go back and mix more concrete you can't mix a huge batch of this Mm -hmm. so you have to mix it in small batches and so that mixing and going back and forth takes time and then of course i have to admit i like to step back and look at it and observe and say hmm this is coming out cute (laughs) <laughs> I kind of like this. And then I'm like, and then I have simmer on day. it and I'm like, oh, let me go smoke a cigarette. Let me go have a beer. Right. Yep. And then I'll come back into another six foot section. And then I stare at it a little bit more. I'm like, I like that. Mm-hmm. That's doing something for me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and, and so that's literally my, my game. Um, so I ended up doing that. And then let me come back here and show you some more. Let me uh, bring this back up here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just a hot mess. 
Uh, so then finally I finished it. I went all the way around into the gate wow. and everything. And then I had to dig out all that corner with all that extra grass and get rid of it. And I created a, a makeshift, uh, dirt sifter. So mm. you, you get some like chicken wire and you, you, you know, just build a little square and you sort of kind of staple the chicken wire and then you throw the dirt on top and you shake it and it loosens the dirt. And so you get good dirt on the bottom and then you get rid of all the grass and everything else on the top. Mm, that's so smart. And uh, so that I can put all that dirt back in there. I didn't want to go out there and buy more dirt. I was like, hell no, I'm shift. I'm <laughs> sifting this stuff. Uh, so I did that. And then finally I went out and I bought, again, I decided to, to buy things that are, um, cost effective because you want them to come back every year mm -hmm. and so i i did a layout i said okay in the front here i'm gonna do like nice green plants things that you know sprout flowers and one of the most popular flower sprouting plants are daylilies and mm -hmm. they come back mm -hmm. and they're very they continuously keep blooming all season. And so those are the kind of plants that you want to have. You right, you want to have pretty plants throughout the entire summer season. And so I did that. And so I decided I was going to put some in the back. But then I needed some height in the back. Mm -hmm. So in the front, I put the daylilies in the back. I wanted some height. And so for that, God, I hope I have. Let's see here. Did I not put that picture in here? Mm, I did not. Oh no. But I can bring it in here. Let okay. me see here. <laughs> I'll show you what the finished product looked like. Uh I thought it was amazing. So I went out and I got myself a, a Japanese sky pencil holly. Ooh. And the reason why I decided to go with that was because that particular oh these are gorgeous pictures. Let's see. <laughs> I can't wait. Um the reason I decided to do the Sky Pencil Holly is because I needed something that would. Um... Oh, that looks so good. Oh, it's nothing like fresh mulch, mm -hmm. man. Well, I, 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 I'm not. People got over mulch, but now I'm one of those people. I'm not, uh, how would I say, um, completely done with mulching, mm -hmm. but I'm working my way up there. And yep. so. So when you look at this picture, you see the sky pencil holly here. Right now, it's only two feet tall, but these can grow up to, you know, 20 feet in the sky, but they're very wow. narrow, right? So one of the things you have to avoid when you're planting some stuff uh, in your garden is you also have to be um, cognizant <laughs> that some of these plants can grow really wide. So if you don't give them ample space, they're going to take up everything else. So when I said I want it height in the back... I wanted something that would grow straight up rather than sideways. Right. And so Japanese pencil, uh, Japanese sky pencil hollies do that. They grow straight up. They fill up sideways, but only about maybe a foot and a half or two. Mm. But then they grow straight up and it's just this gorgeous, beautiful, you know, evergreen that just stays green all, all season, even in the winter. And then I bought, um, what it's called the crimson cutie, um, Burberry. Okay. And so this little crimson cutie is bright red all the time. Even wow. in the winter months, it sort of kind of stays reddish. It does flower in early spring, but mm -hmm. then it also grows sideways, but it also grows up. So it's going to fill up all of that space. That empty space. Good. Yeah. And then in the front, daylilies. And, uh, you know, these will fill up very quickly. These grow like... I, I have some that are basically like weeds. I'm trying to get rid of, there's so many of them. I'm trying to get rid of them, but they dig deep. Like I have put my whole body weight into pulling out a day lily and it will not give. Listen, if you want to dig some out and bring them over, I'll plant them in my yard any day. Oh my they're God. my favorite flower. I love them. Tiger lilies. I love day lilies. Uh, they're, they're great stuff. So, mm -hmm. but it is backbreaking work. It is. It but, really but, is. You know, but when you look at, when you look at the results, look at that. No, it's so beautiful. And that's not even the picture with the mulch. Hold on. I need some mulch. And so now the next thing, the two things that I'm thinking about is uh, one, whether I should wait on Home Depot's mulch uh, sale. They always have a, a five for 10 sale. Mm -hmm. But it's so exciting. I mean, the the cars lined up. It's it's a huge thing. And my Prius can only carry like six bags of mulch at one time. Yeah. 
afraid to throw out the suspension. So <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I should make a couple trips and get the the mulch from Home Depot or if I should find a local nursery to deliver some mulch to the house. Well, here's the thing. It's cheaper if you buy it by the yard. Mm -hmm. You come in and you put a tarp down on your driveway. They come, they dump it on the tarp. You do what you got to do with it and you're done. I know. I know. But then I think I need a wheelbarrow. I'm going to need, like, I just, (laughs) it feels like, uh, either way, it's going to be some work. And so, again, these are the kind of things that you have to think about when you're gardening, right? You have to think about, okay, how complicated do I want to make this? If I can afford to have a, you know... A, a dumpster come and drop all this mulch on my driveway um, versus having to pick up individual bags because the bags make it more portable. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have, for example, like you said, a wheelbarrow, then, you know, it doesn't make any sense to have them come and drop, you know, uh, five, seven cubic feet of, of mulch on your driveway when you can't bring it anywhere unless you have like a bucket or something that you're filling up and so i mean it probably would be something fun for the kids to do right go fill up this bucket and bring it to me yeah but that only you think it's gonna be but kids are the worst it gets tired quickly right fill up half of a bucket and they're like all right i'm moving on so um but yeah it's 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 really interesting um to see how it's all coming together now so here's a common mistake that a lot of people make, mm-hmm. which is very important for you guys to realize. There is what the plant looks like when you first buy it, very tiny, mm-hmm. and what it is expecting or expect expected to look like in its maturity. Mm-hmm. So when you're filling up a space, you have to plant and give them room for them to fill in as if they were a mature plant. Mm-hmm. If you start putting everything together because they look so little and so tiny and you're not giving them room, you're going to have a shit show of garden. Right. When they start growing and getting really big. Right. And once they're really big, you're not going to be able to get them out. Exactly. So just make sure that you plan things out. Like right now, if you look at, I'll show you this picture again, you see the gap between this and this. And you're like, oh, well, all this empty space. Why did you leave it there? These, remember, this gets up to two feet wide Mm -hmm. and up to 20 feet tall. And this one can get up to three feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. And so it'll fill up that space, but it'll do so eventually. And so that's why it's important to also keep in mind that. Look at the little papers that come with the plant. Yes. And patience. (laughs) They're not going to bloom to full capacity the first year or even the second. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a transition. But once you get there, it'll look gorgeous. It will. It will. The and the other thing is that we didn't know. Neither of us are gar- James and I both were not gardening or know anything about plants. And when we got to this house seven years ago, there was a lot of landscaping here. And now, but we didn't know how to handle it. And by the time we really figured out what was going on, it was so out of control. Like we hadn't been landscaping, and so we thought it would just be better to cut down everything and start fresh without realizing that we were really giving up like years and years of maturity of these plants. Like we had a, um, a burning bush, but I vaguely remember it, but it was ginormous. And we had two Forsytha plants that met and created this arch. They had definitely overgrown because I think you were supposed to be able to walk under the arch, but the Kept getting smaller and smaller. But again, these were ginormous plants, like fully mature plants. And, and you could have just trimmed them and made the arch bigger. Them, but we didn't know. We didn't know. We also had these ginormous hostas. Again, we had no idea. And so in an effort to just like start fresh. And I think also you, you get your first house and you're like, I want it to look the way I want to look. Uh-huh. That's before we went to Home Depot and found out how much how much plants cost. <laughs> before we went to a nursery and found out how much like mature plants cost. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend to anybody out there, if you get to a place that has some mature plants, stop and take a minute before you you cut Chop them. Chop it all down. Yeah, because you're the the whole thing about maturity and like plant maturity and their full 
potential. I remember we had some hydrangea bushes that were humongous. Like we still have the root of the hydrangea bush because it was so big. Yeah. Right? We couldn't get rid of it. And when you let that go, it's like you have to start all over yeah, again. Yeah, to start all over again. So uh, now I just I just bought a hydrangea bush from Costco that has, I think it has three hydrangeas on it. Oh, just, it'll yeah. get more by the end of the season. But, you know, and, and the good thing about hydrangeas, so a lot of people don't realize this, you can cut them down. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, let's say your hydrangea got four feet three feet wide and four feet high. And you want to, at the end of the season, cut it down to about maybe a, um, a foot or two, like yeah. even just a foot. You can do that. And then next spring, it'll start looking for new right. ways to, to develop new growth. So, so don't be afraid to trim some of this stuff down. Just do it mm-hmm. correctly. Just do it correctly. So, I mean, I think that is is the thing that I am learning now is one not to not to feel overwhelmed, not to allow yourself, or to like to try not to allow yourself to get overwhelmed by it. Take it one step at a time, right? I I I only bought one hydrangea bush, and I like to buy things in twos. I think it's a syndrome and I had to fight myself to only buy one hydrangea and I bought one, I think it's a rhododendron. Um, I bought one of each. I was like, just the one. And then we'll put it somewhere and we'll see what happens and we'll buy another one, but not to get overwhelmed and to start with where you are, what you have and, and move from there. Cause like you can't, I feel like I've seen some really beautiful gardens. My neighbors have really beautiful gardens and you think, okay, so I'll do that this weekend, but you legit can't, you can't build a garden in a weekend. You can't, you can't rush, you know, you can't rush a plant to grow faster Mm -hmm. than it is going to. You can't rush the garden to fill in the way you would like it to. And I think it's that forced slowdown right? That has really been helping me. It's been helping me calm my mind, calm how much I think, you know, sometimes I spiral from point A to point Z, like, oh, I guess I can't do it, right? There's so many steps that I might as well not even try. And this whole process has just insisted that I slow down and wait for the jalapeno to grow, right? Like if the last one is coming, but I'm waiting for it, like, there. Oh, and it'll come quickly. Like literally, there's going to be one moment in time, and this is an amazing moment for gardeners when you finally reach it, where you look at your plants that you've planted, and you're like, okay, they're they're there. Eventually, they'll do their thing, and then from one day to the next, it's like boom, everything boom. just shot up like a, an extra six inches, and new leaves just sprouted out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, this is working. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and so when you get there, it, it it's it's eye opening, and then all of a sudden, just things just start blooming, and then you start like, for example, when I plant my cherry tomatoes, I love cherry tomatoes. It's like one day you have nothing, the next day you have all these green little balls, mm-hmm. like out of the nowhere, and then they start changing color, and then you can start picking them. Like I'm outside cleaning the yard or whatever, and I just like literally pick one and wash it off and just eat it. Eat it. It's It's delicious. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I really am. I really am. So as we close, I want to do our hashtag mom so hard. Our tip for this week is the thing that got me really interested in gardening in the last two weeks was I watched a documentary called Can You Dig This? And I didn't know anything about it, but there was an ad on Facebook for, I think his name is Ron Henley. He is a gardener and his, um, his moniker is the gangster gardener or the renegade gardener. I think he uses both of them. And he's just this dude from California, from South Central. LA, who, right? From LA, who decided to plant in the um, in the grass on the sidewalk. In he has a master class. So that was the ad that I saw, was the master class Yeah, ad, he has a master class class. Which then uh, took me to, I didn't do the master class, but in looking him up, I found the, the, um, the documentary can you dig this is about him and it's on amazon prime mm-hmm. you have that and then uh, i haven't listened to it yet but he apparently has a really good ted talk so it was that kind of um 
it was his documentary that he he said at the um at the end he was like just plant some shit like just seriously <laughs> like, like don't overthink it don't feel like you can't like just plant some shit and i took that to heart 2 weeks ago and now i have a whole like I have a whole plan coming. So if you get it into you, just plant some shit. <laughs> well, I didn't plant kale. So when you get your kale up and it's all yes, good and ready I'm to go, to share because I, I think, want kale. Because I, to- I told you my fingers are too chubby to do single seeds. So I'm definitely going to have more <laughs> than I'm supposed to have. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah. So I hope that you, if you're listening and you haven't tried gardening before, if you have some time, obviously don't. I'm not telling everybody to run out and go to the garden if you don't have any time because start small. People are still working. No, people are still working, right? Like yeah. I'm stressed out because I'm not working, but other people are still working. Don't overwhelm yourself. Um, you're doing the best that you can, right? The people in your family need exactly you to be doing exactly what it is that you're doing for them. So don't feel bad. Don't put any extra pressure on yourself. You're you're doing a great job. So hold it hold it together as best as you can and um we'll all come out of this on the other side absolutely all right so um thanks for tuning in check out our stuff on echobody.com share the show come i'm just gonna put you all to work right like yeah. you don't to do share the show and come back every week we'll be here that's right until next time bye this show is produced by tom ortiz at digital stream radio it's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at breezymomspodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.